Folks, welcome back to another episode of Mayhem in the Mid-South. Today we're going to look at the murder of Kathleen Bledsoe. Folks, most of the material I'm going to be using came from the United States Court of Appeals, 11th Circuit, which covers the great state of Alabama. It's October 20th, 1983. 16-year-old fella named Charles Leonard, he stops by and picks up his girlfriend. Now, she's also 16 years old, Kathleen Bledsoe. Everybody calls her Kathy. Now, he's driving his daddy's Oldsmobile. Now, on their date, they're going to travel around Birmingham and visit some of the haunted houses. Now at some point they're in the area of Huffman, which is a neighborhood there in east part of Birmingham. And they pull over and they stop at a cul-de-sac. Now according to Leonard, a car behind them flashed its headlights at him, so he thought it was some of his friends, so he pulled over and he waited a second for them to pull in. Now, a vehicle did pull into that cul-de-sac. It circled, it backed out, and then it parked. Now, two young men got out and approached the victim's car. One of them was 21 years old, and the other one, I believe, he was about 17. Now, suspect number one was armed with a pistol, and his little buddy had a knife. Now, they ordered Leonard and Bledsoe out of their car. Now they made the couple get into the trunk of the Oldsmobile. Then one of the suspects drove the Oldsmobile and the second suspect, he drove the, their vehicle. They drove for a few minutes and they finally parked the suspect vehicle in a lot there, which I surmise was still somewhere in the Huffman area. Both the suspects are now in the Oldsmobile with the victims in the trunk. Now this master plan from these two suspects is they want to get some marijuana and they need some money. I guess getting a real job was beyond their capabilities. They had two things working against them. They were young and they were stupid. I guess a third one, they were lazy. So now they're going to rob a drive through restaurant and they pick out a Mrs. Winters and they're figuring they can use the victim's car and that way they make a clean getaway. Now they pull up to the drive through window at this Mrs. Winters and suspect number one, he flashes the pistol. Well, evidently he didn't wait till the employee had opened up the window. In any event, the employee sees the pistol because this is the Birmingham area. So, if you work in a fast food joint, a convenience store, any other business, you're, you're going to learn the ins and outs of being robbed. So now the employee just hollers out it's a robbery and evidently vacates the drive through window. So our two intrepid suspects, with the victim still in the trunk, they take off. Now they drive east. They're heading to the area of Trustful, Alabama. Now that's just down the road. In fact, it's just about a rock throw away from the Huffman area. Well, they pull to a secluded area, and they're thinking about executing the the victims so there won't be any witnesses. The dumbest, dumbest thing. You commit a robbery and you might get away with it. Commit a robbery and a kidnapping, you might get away with it. But when you kill somebody, you're just, you're not going to get away with it. There's no statute of limitations on murder. They'll never stop looking for you. It's just so dumb. All right, now they get the two victims out of the car. 
and they tie the two victims together. Now, little Kathy, she's got two $20 bills in her, her little bill fall, because her daddy gave it to her before she went out that night. Now, the two suspects, they step back, and they're in some kind of a conference. Now, no one knows exactly what they said. Now, there's two different versions of that conversation. Conversation one was that the suspects decided, yeah, they were going to have to execute the victims because they, they couldn't leave a live witness. So now suspect number two, he goes back and starts the car up. Now the second version of this story is, is that when they're conferring, suspect number two said, we shouldn't kill them. We should just drive back and leave them in the trunk and get our car and leave. And then he goes to the car and starts it. Now that's the story suspect two's telling later after he gets caught, which that's exactly what I'd say after I had mucked all this up and had done what I had done, I'd lie too. But neither event. Suspect number one, he walks up. The medical examiner would later estimate approximately five to seven feet. He fired one round into the head of little Kathy Bledsoe. Now she fell. And when she did, it pulled her little boyfriend, Leonard, down with her. Now, she died instantly. Then suspect number one just opens up. He pretty well empties the pistol into the, the victims. Now, Leonard, he's hitting the legs, the hips, the chest, now, the suspect thinks they're both dead, so he jumps into the Oldsmobile, and him and moron number two, they drive off. Now, what they didn't realize was that Leonard was still alive. Even though he'd been just shot to pieces, he was still alive. Now, he gets himself loose from the ropes, able to walk down the road there to a couple's house. Now, that couple, they call the sheriff's department. So now the police are out looking for the two suspects. And they finally locate them. Now, they've already ditched the car, and they've hidden the, the pistol. Now, they snatched them up off the street there in the Huffman area. I don't know if they're... why they hadn't already went back and gotten their car... Don't really know the details of that. The one victim is still alive, positively identifies. Suspect number one is the shooter. And he identifies the second suspect. Now, suspect number one, he does, he confesses to the crime, shows the officers where the shooting took place, and he lets them know where the pistol's at. Just morons. On March 7, 1984, suspect number one is convicted of capital murder. And that charge actually goes on to read, intentionally killing his victim while engaged in the commission of an armed robbery and or kidnapping. Which that's where you get the capital offense from. Jury sentences him to death. Now, the second suspect, he's a juvenile, so you're, you're not going to execute juveniles. Now, suspect number one is later executed in the electric chair. Suspect number two, as of 2019, was still in prison. <laughs>